everyone, welcome back to Country Cat Designs. I'm Jo and uh, my husband Adam is also working behind the scenes with me today. Hi everybody. This is a really quick uh, video just to discuss wax canvas, also known as oil skin. And also at the end we'll just discuss a little bit about waterproof canvas. So we've got a new bag pattern coming out soon, the Cedron backpack. And um, as you can tell we're using a lot of wax canvas and waterproof canvas on this one. Um, that's because we're going for a, a rustic look, but also this is a massive bag and it takes a while to cut it out and to make it. Um, so we wanted to use something that didn't need any interfacing and very little stabilizers because otherwise you're just going to spend hours cutting out and nobody wants that. So that's why we decided to go with wax canvas. Um, so what I've got is a few different examples from different suppliers that I just wanted to show you and discuss um, like methods that I've found work really well with using it and things to watch out for. So to start with, we've got what has become my favorite. So this is called oil skin, um, but it is wax canvas. Um, apparently the only difference really is that one of them uses a, like more oily substance to treat the canvas, the other one uses waxy. So it is basically the same thing. So this is oil skin from Merchant and Mills in Britain and they make this themselves I believe. They have a few different colours, they said that they're also going to be getting a few new colours in next year. Now they do a standard wax canvas which is this or they do a dry. The dry is lighter and it's it doesn't like crease so you can see this one's got like a couple of fold marks in it okay. I haven't really used this much yet. This is the exact same thing, but this is after it's been creased. So you can see this is like the appeal of wax canvas is you crease it and look at that patina. It's amazing. So it gets so much character. It's really, really cool. It gets character as you're working with it and then it gets like loads more if you just want to like crinkle it up at the end. And then as you're wearing the bag, it kind of gets even more creases and character. So it gives like a really nice rustic look. It's thick enough that you don't need to interface it. So this is 12 ounce or 400 grams per square meter. That's not the same as denier. Um, so a few people have asked me about like when it says 400 denier, is that 400 GSM? No, from what I can tell it's not. And it's not on like the same scale. So it's not like directly transferable. So you can't just say, oh, 600 denier is the same as 400 GSM. That's not really how it works. Um, so this is 400 GSM, 12 ounce. That tends to be the standard that you get for wax canvas. It's really nice weight. Um, so on this backpack, we've just got the wax canvas and then we've got waterproof canvas on the inside and no stabilizers and no interfacing here at all. The only stabilizer we've got is a bit in the gusset and a bit on the back. So you get so much body from this because it's kind of like got a stiffness to it, that it just works really, really well for not having to interface and things like that. Now, I've also got the gray from Merchant and Mills. And then I wanted to show you one of their thinner ones. So this is a minty colored one. And this is some of their dead stock. So it's generally cheaper, their dead stock, because they're getting rid of it. Now, you can probably see that it's kind of see-through. You will get this with wax canvas, even with the thicker stuff. Quite often it's quite see-through, but once you've got the lining fabric inside the bag, provided it's not like a patterned fabric, say you've just got waterproof canvas inside, then it will no longer be see-through because that color will be sort of, you know, blocking it out. If you really want to, you could just baste in some interfacing and then that would stop it from being see-through. But definitely with the thinner stuff, you will see that it is often see-through and the lighter colors very much so. So this one I think is eight ounces, so it's lighter. This I would be more uh, critical about what I used it on because it is quite a bit lighter. So I think I probably would based in some interfacing or something like that, which is a shame because that kind of ruins the whole point of why I wanted to use wax canvas. But uh, this is a similar one that I got from eBay. So. There's a load on eBay that you can get that's like seconds and things like that, which for wax canvas doesn't really matter because if it's got a few marks, you know, you're going to mark it. So this again is quite thin, kind of see through about eight ounces, I believe. Um, so that's like 300 GSM or less grams per square meter, by the way, is GSM. So um, this is all right. It's not 
it's not a nice quality. Like immediately when I got the Merchant and Mill stuff, I was like, wow, that is good. And I really, really trust it on a bag. I feel like that bag's gonna look amazing for a long period of time. Should just say this video is not sponsored. No, not sponsored <laughs> at all. Um, <laughs> but the eBay stuff, whew, okay. So I've got some other suppliers I wanted to talk about um, across the world. Merchant and Mills is the one in Britain. Their stuff is amazing, but don't bother emailing them if you've got an inquiry. Um, just give them a call because they've got like a shop up in Rye and they're so busy that if you email them, it will probably take them a week to get back to you. So just phone them instead um, because their fabrics are so nice. Mm, yeah, I love them. Okay, so that's those ones. This is what I got from Emmeline in Canada. So Emmeline do some wax canvas. Now they do the 12 ounce, which is the same weight as what I generally use from Merchant Mills. But you might be able to tell, this has got a weave to it. Um, so this is like a duck canvas and it's got like um, a visible weave. Whereas this from Merchant Mills is, yeah, you can't see the weave. So it's, I was really surprised because I didn't realize that you get different types of wax canvas, but you do. So this has got like a really nice rustic look to it. Again, you get like the nice creases and yeah, they've got loads of different colors. They also have 20 ounce. Okay, so this is the 20 ounce. This is thick. I started using this on my domestic machine and then um, I don't think my domestic machine was liking it. After like two layers, I thought, nah, this is, mm, it's not liking it. I'm gonna have to be very picky about where I put this and make sure that I've not got too many layers, like not use it on a bag where there's loads of layers. So I think I'm gonna combine it with other panels that are thinner fabric, so then I can sew through it. So just be aware, if you've got an industrial, this stuff is brilliant. If you just wanna use it for like a base or something, you'd be fine. But if you're gonna use it for a whole bag on a domestic machine, you might have a problem. Even just cutting that you can feel you the thickness. feel the thickness yeah mm. i mean that is like really really durable and again that's got like the weave that you can see so they sent this to me rolled because i ordered it with a large like a wholesale international order but normally it comes folded like it does from merchant mills and that means that you're going to have like fold crease lines in it but as soon as you start like creasing everything up it's just not going to matter you can remove creases though if you want to you can, but um, I was watching a video by Sonar. Um, I'll link her channel in the description. And she talks a lot about how it has like a memory wax canvas. And it does, like once you've got like a, a crease in it, you can put it between some baking paper and you can give it an iron, like a light iron. Be really careful when you do that, by the way. Uh, maybe test it on an off cut first. And what that should do is like remelt the wax and get rid of any marks. Or you could use a hairdryer to do the same thing. But it's never gonna go like 100%. That crease line will always be there a little bit. Um, I've never been able to get rid of anything at 100% either, but you know, look how cool it looks. So why would you want to? <laughs> okay, so when you're marking it, you're gonna wonder about using wax canvas. I just use an awl, it's so simple. So rather than using um, like a, a marking pen, if you use an awl, you can just mark a line in the wax. It's really nice and easy. If you want that line to be hidden, you wanna do it really faint because it will be on show later on. So just be aware of that, but it is a great way to mark it. If you want to uh, press something, you know, in a pattern, we like fold it and we press it. You can just press it with your fingers or you can use a seam roller. This is awesome, I got this off Amazon. And it will really stay in place then. So it's great, because you don't have to like get the iron out and press it, you just press it with your fingers or with the seam roller. If you're quilting, Sonar also has a great video on that, because Wax Canvas Quilted looks awesome. Um, and that's what she does, she marks all of her quilting lines like that. So she like folds and presses the seam and then it makes it really, really easy to quilt. So that, that looks awesome as well. Now cutting it, you can just use your normal like rotary cutter and things like that. You won't have any problems. Um, when you're clipping things together, make sure that you use Wonder Clips because if you use pins, the holes will stay there. They won't heal. So you can see on this panel that I stitched it and then had to undo it. Um, that's because I realized I cut this panel entirely the wrong size. So you can see that the stitch holes, they don't disappear. 
even if you kind of heat it up with a hairdryer or something like that, they won't go completely. They'll fade very slightly, but they'll still be quite prominent. Um, when you're using anything like a hairdryer on your wax canvas, be careful because um, you can kind of damage the wax. One thing that happened to me whilst I was making a bag, um, I think it's this one. I had my iron nearby, just nearby, not actually on the bag. And uh, my iron sprayed a load of steam. I think, yeah, it's this side, isn't it? Um, and basically it kind of like steamed all of the wax off and it had these really big white marks all over it. So I re-waxed it, but I don't feel like it looks as good as it did originally. So I would say keep your iron well away from it when you're um, not using it. And if you do want to iron it, you know, between parchment sheets or baking sheets to get the creases out, you can do that, but do not use steam. Um, I know Blue Color has this amazing, um, blog about how to wax your own canvas and she does it using an old iron. So I'll link that in the description as well. Um, so you can iron it, but just, you need to be very careful. Okay, so there's a couple of other supplies I wanted to mention. There's AL Francis Textiles in America and Sunkiss Melbourne in Australia and they are both on Etsy. So I will link all the suppliers in the video description so you can get the links from there. So for needles, I have been using Microtex size 90 and when I get to the thicker bits, I use denim or jeans needles size 100 or 110. They seem to be working just great on this. Um, my universal needles didn't seem to work so well, which is why I've gone with those. Now you're gonna have trouble using double-sided tape on wax canvas. So I tend to use um, Fabri-Tac glue instead. That seems to work much better for me. So I asked on my um, mailing list whether anybody had any questions about wax canvas and one of the questions was, does it make the bag heavy? So, um, it is heavier than, you know, using cotton, but then you, you've not got your interfacing or anything. So for me, this feels about, about right for a backpack, like for a backpack of this size. Um, it doesn't feel any heavier than I would expect it to. So I don't think it makes it like exceptionally heavy using wax canvas. So you'll find with wax canvas that it becomes more malleable the more you use it and um, it'll feel easier to use. You will feel like a bit of wax kind of on your fingers. So watch out for your machine because your feed dogs, they'll gather some of the wax when you're using it. So you want to make sure that you just like clean it out after each time you've been using wax canvas. We had to give the Benina a good cleaning, didn't we? After we finished was it three or four bags? Yeah, we've bags. done three or four big backpacks and then we decided to give it a good clean out and she was grateful. So um, definitely make sure you clean out your machine. But it's not hard, it's very quick to do. No, I think that's why the Microtex needles work so well because Microtex needles have a special coating and stuff doesn't stick to them. So I think that's why it works so well with the wax. Now, after 12 months, you're supposed to re-wax your fabric. I don't know how many people actually do but um, you just simply buy a bar. You can get like Ottertex wax, which is like a bar. And you just, it's a bit manual, but you have to just scrub it all over your bag and that will re-wax it if you want to do that. Now, I would say one thing. Um, I haven't had any transference of wax like onto my clothes or anything, but I wouldn't leave your bag in a hot car because I'm, I imagine that if you left it in a hot car when you came back, kind of all your creases would be gone because it will have gotten hot and the wax would have melt, melted back in. Um, so I would probably, if I did, I'd make sure I'd leave it in the boot rather than like on one of the back seats, just in case there's a little bit of wax transference in the heat. I haven't had it happen to me yet, but it's something that, you know, I just think I'm aware of. Okay, so you can't wash wax canvas just be aware of that you can like spot clean it but i definitely would not wash it um when i bought this it said in the instructions definitely not to wash now somebody asked me about fraying you do get a little bit of fraying nothing major though um nothing more than i get with other fabrics um so i i haven't i haven't worried about it at all but i wouldn't leave its edges raw you know i wouldn't use it like i do with cork or vinyl where occasionally you can leave the edge raw the thing that somebody asked me was whether it cracks over time. 
I haven't found that to be the case. I found that it gets softer over time. Um, so no, I haven't had a problem with that at all. And one last question I got asked was about the stitch length. So I have been using a three mil stitch length for most of my stitching. I didn't want to go any closer than that because as I showed on this one, your stitch holes, they don't heal and I don't want to like perforate the fabric by having really small stitching. And then when I did my top stitching, I used a four mil length because that's the longest that my machine does. Okay, and for threads, I have just been using 100% polyester thread like normal. Um, I've got my Coates Moon threads, which I've got tons of and I've been working my way through. That's great. I've also got my Sabertex 40, which I get from Little Stitches Those. Again, I'll link her in the description. This is a bit thicker. It's a bit stronger. It's still 100% polyester. Um, this is really, really nice tough thread and it's a little bit more visible on the fabrics, but um, it's the thickest I've been able to use in my bobbin without any problems. So I use this on the top and the bobbin, no problems. I have tried thicker thread and the bobbin is a disaster. So just watch out for that. Now for our backpack, we have been using WPC, waterproof canvas, for the linings. Now the reason we're using this is again, no interfacing and no stabilizers. So the most common WPC that you'll find in bags is um, this sort of heavy weight. This is 600 grams per square meter or 18 to 20 ounces. It's really thick and it's, it's got like a nice stiffness to it. It's really easy to sew um, and it just gives so much body to your bag that you don't need any interfacing. And yeah, like I said, with these backpacks, there's like, there's no interfacing. There's only a tiny bit of stabilizer. If it was a smaller bag, you'd need no stabilizer. It means that the inside is all waterproof. Now, I know it sounds like a lot of thickness to go through, but with this in the wax canvas, my machine just blew through it without any problems. Um, even when I was putting the binding on, no problem at all with the layers. I think that's because there is no interfacing and stabilizers. So it's just these. So yeah, it's just excellent. Really, really good. It's like waterproof, wipeable. Yeah, love it. And you'll generally find that it's, I mean, in England, it's like seven pound 50 a meter. So it's really affordable. It's one and a half meters wide, like 60 inches wide. Just really, really good value for money. Um, so that's what we're using for the lining. So this backpack is gonna have no interfacing, which is amazing. You'll also notice that because you're not paying for interfacing, which, you know, it can be a few pounds per yard. You don't have to worry about that either. So you're saving money on the fabric and then you're saving money on the interfacing. It actually ends up making it quite cheap to make. So this is another WPC I wanted to show you, but I just wanted to show you like the difference. This is 300 grams per square meter. So it's half the thickness. This I love for like small bags, for the linings, like waterproof linings or small bags. Again, I don't interface it. But if you're going for a massive bag, this one, this 600 GSM is fabulous because it'll give you all the stability you need. Okay, so um, that I think is everything. The bag's so big, you almost hide behind it. I know, I feel it. like I can hide behind it. So this is our biggest pattern by far. You'll notice it's got the buckle option on this one and it's also, got a magnetic snap option. So there's loads and loads of options in this pattern, okay? Um, on the back, there's an optional zip pocket. On the inside, there's another optional zip pocket. There's uh, an optional bottle pocket, which you can fit like a full sports bottle in. And there's a laptop strap as well, okay? So this bag is enormous. This pattern is gonna be coming out at the very beginning of February. It's just with the testers at the moment. So if you wanna try using Wax Canvas and WPC, I'd say this is a great opportunity to try it. Making a bag this big and having to cut out all the interfacing for it is gonna drive you insane. Um, because that's that would be a lot of interfacing if you were doing all cotton, you know? So definitely, if you wanna give this bag a try, I would really encourage you to try out some Wax Canvas and some Waterproof Canvas. And I think you're gonna find that you absolutely love it. 
If you have any comments of your own or any tips for using wax canvas or waterproof canvas, please let us know in the comments. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask. We're always really happy to hear from you guys. Thanks so much for joining us today. And um, we hope that you will give it a go and really introduce some new, new styles into your sewing and enjoy them. So thanks for joining us, everyone. Have a great week. Bye.